Well, I was a driver. So what they did, uh, they got close the first time they turned around. Second time they went in there and they announced what it is. And so after that, ain't nothing else to be said. So the thing was, we don't want nothing in the till, nothing in the drawers. and want straight safe because we know either you got to die or the explosion, the tracker or something in them tills. We don't want none of that. We want shit straight out the safe. So disregard all that shit. So they went straight to the safe. And I can't remember how much it was. I know it was over a hundred some thousand dollars. Subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man. Subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man. Yeah, man, it's going down. It's Donnie Houston Podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. Uh, we got a special guest today, man. Uh, homie is uh, doing his thing out here on the comedy circuit in the H, you know what I'm saying, and, and beyond. You know, he just packed out uh, Cafe 4212, you know what I mean? Um, hey, man, Leroy the Third, what's going down, What's man? up, man? What's going on? What's the deal, baby? Man, I'm in here at the Donnie Houston show. That's what I'm doing. Representing right. Mo City. I forgot to put that out there. Oh, yeah. Mo know. City, Ridgegate, Texas, to be exact. There it is. 21 uh, years. Already, already. What's going down, man? Man, a uh, whole bunch of comedy, man. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to keep this consistency thing going. I've been in it a little bit over eight years, nine years next year, and what I've done, I, I, I can honestly start. To, I'm starting to see stuff pan out and play out the way it's supposed to be. You know, I've been hearing. I, I say probably since COVID started, I start hearing. You know, people saying, "I see you, I see you, I see you." But it was always, you know what I'm saying, I, I want to try to soak up what they saying and try to drill it into my ego just a little bit, but it never happened. So now I say about this year, I honestly start seeing an evolution in myself, and I really start seeing a change in evolution, man. So this year has been real good to me, man. Uh, I actually came out of retirement on doing shows. I hadn't did a, a comedy show for like five or six years. Hmm. Actually, it just you mean putting on your own yeah, show producing you know, yeah. from through the, uh, through and through. You know, I've been doing the uh, open mics. I put on those shows, but those were one hundred percent mine. So I said, man, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and do it because I know what the logistics of it is. It can become stressful. But what I told myself, I'm like, man, I'm I'm 43 now. So what I got to do? I got to make sure I'm spread myself too thin. I can't stress myself out. I can't do everything last minute. Let me do this and that. Uh, I'm gonna do away with all the extra stuff. I'm gonna stick with the with the basics, and my basics should be awesome at this point to the outsiders. So that's exactly what I did, and I wanted to ultimately prove it to myself that I had this in me. So when I walked in there, I knew it was gonna be nice. I didn't know it was gonna be like that. Hmm. So that was that was it right there. And ever since then, man, it's been nonstop, dog. Nonstop. I mean, it's been nonstop, but it's been nonstop in my mental. As far as I got to keep this running, I got to keep this running. Yeah. yeah. What? What? Um. You say you've been doing it about eight years. What? What inspired you to like, you, like comedy wise? You know what I'm saying? Well, man, just like a lot of comics, man, we all in school were some type of class clown, acted out. You know what I'm saying? That's just what you do. Matter of fact, with me, I was so troubled and bad in school shit my my old man used to uh he was a computer engineer he used to uh make conduct sheets monday through friday and i had to take them to my teacher and have each one of them sign off that's how bad the motherfucker i was i was fucking terrible so i would go in there and it got to the point that i was like man i can just force the teacher's name <laughs> and i started doing that shit and then, of course, if you act in the fool, them, dra- them grades start slipping. Then you get written up. But back then, they used to write you up and send the discipline slips home. But I got home before my parents, so guess what? The discipline slips is going in the gutter. So <laughs> I don't know if it's uh, it that exists down there or whoever lived in that gutter or that bayou you know how bad I was because there's plenty of discipline slips, progress reports, all that shit. My old man be like, hey, Knesset and Tony say they got their, their report going progress report. Where you at? But shit, they they probably ain't put my grades in yet or some <laughs> shit. So what, 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 why were you tripping so much? I don't know. I think well, I was diagnosed with ADHD back in I think 
seventh, eighth grade, but I'm pretty sure I had been having this shit. It's they just, just put a name official. Yeah. yeah. So what happened was I went from being hyper disruptive. I was I was always respectful. And then uh, my parents, I remember we went to the psychiatrist, I'll never forget this shit. And I was acting the fool. And uh, they said, well, we're gonna put this nigga on something to slow his motherfucking ass down. It was called Ritalin back then. So I take the shit, <laughs> it's all been class. But what happened is I developed a, a OCD for certain things. Like I would be writing the paper. Back when I was in school, you had to write on the front and back on college rule paper. So I can get to the back of the page the back of the page and be at the bottom and fuck up on a word and basically tear that shit up and write, rewrite it again. So I developed a whole bunch of OCD with that shit too. But my grades went from straight Fs and Ds to straight Bs and As. So that rhythm, man. Now they what? The, what's the shit they take nowadays? Uh, what's the shit that the, the blue collar motherfuckers take? If they mind function. Adderall. Adderall, that's the shit. That's the same shit. That's the same shit. But the thing is, um, with my kids, like my oldest, he was suffering from ADHD. And then the thing is, back then, shit, you used to get on your kid's ass for acting up. They go back to school, do the same shit. So with him, I was like, man, let me see what the real problem is instead of getting on his ass, you know what I'm saying, and see what kind of, you know, see what's really going on. But... You know, you just kind of open up that line of communication and then eventually he kind of talk to you and then he slow down. And a lot of times it's a lot of acting out as well. So I came up in the 80s, man. So you see a lot, even though you had both parents in the house, you still see a lot. You know what I'm saying? So I think everything had a little part to play in it. Uh, as of right now, I don't think I'm ADHD. I'm more ADD. I can sit my ass down now. You know what I'm saying? Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.